first on CBS this morning. We are excited to have the two-time yeah. gold medalist with us at the table, Ooh. Ashley. <laughs> good morning. And I got to start here. Can we feel that medal? Because it <laughs> looks... Hello. Today I present to you an extremely attractive application for music lovers. It's completely free. You can listen to music online or download unlimited music to use whenever you don't have internet. The powerful search function helps you find anything you want. Trust me. It's hard not to find what you're looking for because the search function is really powerful. Application download link is attached in the description of the video. I'm pretty sure you'll like it. Thanks. So heavy. <laughs> I mean, course. like, it's an Olympic gold medal. It's so heavy. I, oh, my wow. God. Wow. It really is. You, to have two of these, can you, do you have perspective now on what that means? I mean, it's so interesting because everyone fixates on the metal, but the metal is just like a representation of this whole journey. It's so beautiful and it means so much to me, but it's like all of the hard work of the past five years, of the previous four years that goes into building that metal in like a figurative sense that... Um, really, really is what we're going to hold on to. And, and this just represents all of that. It's so interesting to say the past five years, of course, it's instead of the more past four that. years, because you, you went through this grieving process, you say, after the Olympics were delayed. What was it like with that kind of extra year you had to stay fit for? Yeah, there were a lot of... Um, it, was, it was hard to adjust. It was hard. Like you said, um, there was a grieving, the loss of the Olympics. We didn't know there was so much uncertainty about whether the Olympics would actually even happen. And then there was kind of like a resurge of energy because we had a new goal. We had a new destination point and we were suddenly moving towards the 2021 Olympics. So um, within our team, there was a lot of growth, a lot of new energy and just everyone kind of came together to support each other and take on a new role within the team, which was so cool to see. I think I started saying it's even longer than that. This goes back to childhood, to when, you know, I was joking with you about on the swim team, water polo was our day off on Friday, yeah. and that's how some people fall in love with it. But yeah. this is something you've worked towards your whole life. Yeah, and I didn't have a typical Olympic journey. I didn't have the dream when I was really young, and part of that is because I didn't see people who looked like me in the sport when I was younger, but... For a lot of our teammates, this has been in the works since they were very young. And they set that Olympic dream early and they pursued it. So celebrating that with them, celebrating um, my also individual Olympic dream coming true, it's, it means the world to all of us. You want to try to change that idea. When you say you didn't see somebody who looked like you in the sport, it is a very white sport, water polo, yes. period, swimming even more so. How are you trying to change that? So the first thing that I had to do to change that and to like realize my role in it was to understand the context of exclusion and inclusion in aquatic spaces for people of color and just understand why there weren't more people who look like me in the sport in aquatics in general. And then I realized that um, it's a huge responsibility, but it's a responsibility that I had the opportunity to welcome and that I could welcome by literally just being here. I could just be a mirror that a young black girl or a young black boy could look to and see themselves in. And I realized how powerful that was and how powerful that could be for someone who's um, coming into our sport and maybe has heard the stereotype that black people don't swim or looked and didn't see anyone who didn't who looked like them and just kind of got discouraged. So. It's yeah. part of my mission to change that. It's definitely inspiring. I think we also need to talk about how difficult water polo is. It may have been a break day for swimmers, but that's only because swimming is a boring process. That was right. It was a break forth. from the back and forth. In the pictures that we showed introducing you, Ashley, you're in the pool, and it looks like you're standing on solid ground with your arms in the air or diving, but of course you're not. You're treading water the whole time. How do you stay in shape? How do you get in shape and stay in shape <laughs> for like that? rise it's up like out of the water <laughs> to... Core yeah. strength, right? Yeah. It's... Full body strength. Like, I always talk about how water polo isn't just what you see. Like, we look really calm from here up, right. but we're constantly working underwater. It takes a lot of leg strength. It takes a lot of arms. I push with my hands and do, like, a huge breaststroke kick for people who know what a breaststroke kick is to lunge, to block the ball. But also, it's a game that requires a lot of intelligence. Like, as a goalkeeper, I'm constantly making reads. I'm um, communicating to my defense what's open. I'm manipulating, like a lot of different things in the water, including my own body, to try to make that stop, to try to make a pass, to like 
stop the other team from scoring. And it's just such a fun game, and you do have to be very strong. So let me ask you about your journey, uh, how you got to be an Olympian. I mean, you talked about being a catalyst for change for young black boys and girls going forward, but what was it like for you when you first stepped into the pool? Um, I stepped into the pool, and my journey with aquatics, with water polo, has always been about fun. So I didn't love swimming because <laughs> <laughs> it's boring sometimes. It really is. Yeah, I'm it's sorry. a little bit boring. I was like singing in my head. I was like, okay, we just gotta get to the wall, like flip turn. But yeah, my family was there. My social life was there. Like. I just had fun with it, and I continue to have fun with it to this day, and that's why I can stay here so long. But I grew up in a family of five children. We had a pool in our backyard, learned to swim from a Jamaican Olympian, which I wasn't aware of when I was young, but... You didn't know at, that they were an Olympian? <laughs> I didn't know that she was an Olympian. That was, it was amazing, um, like, looking back at the whole journey now. But um, we learned to swim together and just grew so much together in the sport that... Uh, I really highly recommend. So you never, you had, it. you didn't, you didn't, you had blockers on. In other words, when you would show up at the pool and let's say you were the only person of color there, you didn't, that didn't phase you. That didn't phase me because I grew up with my siblings in the sport and we had a lot of support um, within our club team growing up. So when I left in high school, like going to the national team, going to college, I became more and more aware of other people's perception of me and whether or not I should be there. But I was already developing like the protective mechanisms, you know, the things that I told myself about myself, the stories that I had about myself that I knew didn't confirm those stories. Like, mm -hmm. you probably shouldn't be swimming. Like, what about your hair? What about like all of these things? And um, I hope that me being here kind of breaks through those uh, stories that other people tell young black kids in aquatics about themselves so that um, they don't even have to doubt, they don't even question whether or not they belong here because we belong here, we're strong, we excel in aquatics and there's so much opportunity. You more than excel. Real quickly, I know you just finished an Olympics, <laughs> but will there be potentially a third gold medal for you, another Olympics for you? I don't wanna, there's always potential, there's always um, the journey, but if anything I've learned in the past year and a half is that you can't predict what's gonna happen, you can't, um, I can't say where I'm going to be in three years, but I hope it's at the top of the podium again, and I uh, hope it's with this team. Interesting. There's a lot of potential yeah. on that side of the table. On this side of the table... Not so much. <laughs> we are cheering you on. Cheering on. We're so proud of you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thanks for letting Thank us hold the medal. So yes. Of course. Johnson, you're amazing.